Fantastic Doggos in History, Episode 6. September 15th, 1918, Corporal Lee Duncan found an abandoned German Shepherd and her five puppies. He decided to keep two of them and named one of them Rin Tin Tin. Rin Tin Tin took to commands and tricks very quickly. He even won a leaping contest by jumping 11 feet 9 inches in the air. It was that day that Rin Tin Tin was first captured on camera, and his owner Lee thought he could be the next famous dog. Lee took Rin Tin Tin to Hollywood and walked him up and down Poverty Row until somebody would give him a role in their film. His first major break was this film, Where the North Began. He would go on to star in 27 Hollywood films and is credited for pulling Paramount Pictures out of bankruptcy. He also got many highly paid sponsorships like Kennel, Rash, Ken L Biscuits, and Pup E Crumbles. I really want to be in the marketing meetings for those products. Let's use hyphens and single letters, really keep it splashy. In 1932, Rin Tin Tin died, but his name lived on for decades in film and television. Fantastic Doggos in History, Episode 7. Our story begins in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1855. John Gray was a city police night watchman, and to keep him company on the long winter nights, he bought a Sky Terrier named Bobby, and the two of them became inseparable partners. In 1858, John unfortunately succumbed to tuberculosis, but Bobby, refusing to give up on his master, continued to sit by his grave for over 14 years. Bobby became a local hero, and he would draw daily crowds to watch him sit by the grave. In 1867, a law was passed that all dogs had to be licensed. Bobby was given this brass collar and a license by the Lord Provost of the town. Bobby's story went on to inspire many books and movies. He even had a cameo in the movie The Body Snatcher. He also has an Easter egg in Red Dead Redemption. You guys remember this poor little guy? Fantastic Doggos in History, Episode 8. In 1937, Chief Bozen's mate Blackie Rother bought a black and tan mutt for his girlfriend. Unfortunately, her apartment building didn't allow dogs. Rother decided to smuggle the pup onto the U.S. Coast Guard ship, the George Campbell, and the dog very quickly became one of the crew. He used to drink coffee and whiskey. He also loved beer and had his own duty stations. They mean duty like D-U-T-Y, not duty like duty, but he had to have that too. The dog became known as Sinbad, and he had his own papers that he signed with his paw print. In 1940, he was banned from Greenland because he kept attacking sheep. The locals got so mad they had to demote him in rank. Aside from the sailor shenanigans, Sinbad also helped in combat. Sinbad remained aboard the Campbell for the entirety of World War II, and became one of only two non-commissioned animal officers. Fantastic Doggos in History, Episode 9. In 2011, protests broke out in the Chilean city of Santiago. University students who were asking for free public education were met with riot gear and tear gas. But what the students didn't realize is that they were about to get a powerful ally, a dog known as Negro Matapacos. The dog was a stray, but he would show up to protest and viciously attack police. The dog came under the care of Maria Campos. She would feed him at night and actually tied his iconic red bandana around his neck. Matapacos would spend the evenings with Maria, but every day he would go out and fight in the protests. The dog quickly became an icon for the movement, but his fame soon spread far beyond Santiago. Artwork popped up all over the country in the form of murals, effigies, and even costumes. His symbol even reached New York and all the way to Japan. Matapacos passed away August 26, 2017, not before fathering 32 puppies with six different mothers. He was a very good boy. Fantastic Doggos in History, Episode 10. When Lawrence Trimble was younger, he always wanted a dog, but his parents would never let him have one. However, when he moved out to go to school, he started collecting dogs, including this collie named Gene. Gene turned out to be incredibly smart and learned tricks with ease. Lawrence was a writer, and in 1909 he was visiting Vitagraph Studio. Then producer Albert Smith was working on a script that involved a dog. Smith asked Lawrence if he knew anybody who could train a dog to do the tricks in the script, and Lawrence volunteered Gene. Gene became highly successful and went on to do 25 silent films. She became the first ever American movie dog star. Dog American star? Dog star. Gene also launched Lawrence's career, who went on to train some of the most famous dogs in history, including Strongheart. Unfortunately, most of Gene's films were lost, except for this next one. Oh, these, these aren't eggs. They're rocks. What the heck? Oh, here's your basket, lady.